The name Jamie Redfern conjures up many images. Young talent time, king of pop, a tour with Liberace. But contract problems brought everything to a standstill. Jamie didn't perform for 15 years. In the 15 years that I wasn't performing, I was, uh, believe it or not, I was doing many things. I was doing a, a lot of charity work. I was also uh, doing a public relations job with a food company for quite a while. And teaching. Jamie now has his own talent school in Melbourne. Good night, Australia. <laughs> Good to see Jamie back again. Even though he started on TV as a child, his career never relied on staying young. As long as he sings, he'll always get work. But you know, getting an early start in television is no guarantee of a long career. Kids grow up. So what happens then? Let me introduce you to a guy who won a Logie as a child and then disappeared. But we found him. And to make things interesting, I won't tell you who he is until the end of this segment. If you were born on the first day of television, you're possibly into your second marriage, maybe with a couple of kids. If you're a guy, you're losing too much hair but not enough weight. Chances are you're approaching your first midlife crisis. But for people who grew up on television, all that can happen by the time you hit 20. It's not that being a child star is hard. The hard part is what comes later. Hey, wait a minute! <laughs> Paul Peterson, TV star at 16, washed up at 20. Fame is a drug. And uh, speaking as an old drunk and drug addict, believe me, fame was tougher to get over than, than any amount of booze I ever drank or any amount of drugs I ever consumed because it's so contrary to the process of growing up where you, your circle of effect is supposed to increase. Paul Peterson's career in television was nearly over before it began. He was one of the original Mouseketeers, but was fired in the first week for conduct unbecoming a mouse. They called me Mouse. I hate nicknames. And I punched the casting guy named Lee Travers in the stomach and said, don't call me Mouse, fatso. And Walt Disney was standing behind him, and I was fired that afternoon. Like many child stars, growing up proved to be a bad career move. Paul blew his fortune on fast living and spent 20 years in no man's land. When he finally dried out and weaned himself off celebrity, Paul discovered he wasn't alone. Drew Barrymore, Danny Bonaducci, Todd Bridges, Dana Plato, Gary Cole. Paul decided to do something about it and formed a support network for child stars. Frankly, kids who work too much in this business are really putting their future at risk. So we try to counsel ways to prepare children, even no matter how famous, to prepare themselves for the next adventure. Dennis the Menace was never too far from trouble. And sometimes trouble came in glasses and curls. But Dennis deserted me and all the babies. Very bossy, very pushy, very know-it-all, um, very aggressive. You know, the kid you want to run from when you see her coming. In other words, Margaret was a pain in the neck. I right then the Dr. Jean Russell, who played Margaret, became a chiropractor. Her clients include many fellow child stars. I suppose it's like alien abduction. You know, it's like we can sit around and talk about how it was, you know, and it's, it's a real unique club. Being a child in show business is one of, it's a very unique lifestyle. And if you've lived it, you get it. And if you haven't lived it, I can exp try and explain it till I'm blue in the face. And it's interesting, but it's hard to get. There isn't a better high than, than pleasing an audience. And, and once that is in your blood, it's very hard to, uh, you know, get rid of. Jack Wilde he had his own TV show, a string of hit records, and a starring role in the feature film Oliver. Unfortunately, cuteness came with a use-by date. It's very much a case in Hollywood, it, if you're not there, you're forgotten so quickly. What followed was an uninterrupted drinking binge that should have cost Jack his life. I shouldn't really be talking here now. I mean, I've, my heart has stopped three times. And thankfully, I've been seven years dry now. And um, I've, although I'm still experiencing all the good and bad points in life, at least I'm sober enough to tackle them. Now, acting roles are few and far between. In the meantime, Jack writes from his home in London and tries to turn a minus into a plus. When I think of all the incredible actors that have been alcoholics in the past, or, or, or even drug addicts, whatever, there are quite a lot of us. You lose. Who said he's allowed to vote? All those in favour of nudge voting? Aye. Addiction can take many forms. For one of these kids, 
it was gambling. I sort of knew I was destroying myself at the same time. I felt comfortable because I was in control in my little world. And um, maybe in a way I was trying to destroy my career at the same time. Gambling not only destroyed Paul Smith's career, it ruined his life. This is a prison farm in Tasmania, Paul's home for three months. Well, I've spent uh, two years trying to put my life back together and I'm happy with where I'm at at the moment. I spent a bit of time for, uh, for cashing checks for, to enable my gambling. That's all in the past now. Computer programming is a much more low-key, stress-free career, which Paul will pursue after he pays his debt to society. I really can't envisage me working in the TV industry anymore. I think I said once that in the TV industry you can be Houdini and the next minute you're just playing who. And I'm quite happy being who.